What's up guys, it's the Sabro Finally 4. I was supposed to have a bunch of Shadow matches today for Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. I recorded that video before Kazuki Takahashi died. But I don't think it's right or enough just to make one tribute video for his death and then just go about posting videos as normal. I want to do a little bit more to honor his memory. So today, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you guys my story on how I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, this might be a bit long, but I hope you guys bear with me. And feel free to leave in the comments how you got into Yu-Gi-Oh! basically. So, strangely enough, I actually got introduced to Yu-Gi-Oh! through an Argos catalog. Uh, for you guys that don't know, Argos catalogs was something that was going on in the UK for a long time. Uh, they stopped in 2020. It was a big fat catalog with a million different things, just anything that you could imagine that you wanted to buy. Uh, clothes, electronics, uh, things for the house, just name it. And of course, it had a bunch of toys uh, as well. And back then, when I went to the UK, uh, because my grandparents lived there, my uh, dad's parents, let's say, uh, we went to the UK for a holiday. I was very young. I think it might have been 2002. And there was an Argos catalog, and of course, you go through it, and very impressed by all of the toys and all of the stuff that you just want to get. And I remember seeing a bunch of what we know now as uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters, like Summon Skull, Blue Eyes White Dragon toys. And I didn't even know that they were called Yu-Gi-Oh! I just thought to myself, man, this is just some lame stuff. I thought the Yu-Gi-Oh! toys there, uh, they were lame. And I was only interested... Well, I was interested in a bunch of things, but mainly it was a bunch of Digimon Tamer Transformers. It was uh, Cubimon, Growlithmon, Cubimon, and Gargomon, I think was the green one. Um, I ended up getting Growlithmon and Cubimon, not Gargomon, although I always had that regret. And that was the hot shit for me back then. So, fast forward, I don't know how many months or uh, how much time basically passed by. But um, lo and behold, Yu-Gi-Oh! anime is on the TV. I catch a random episode. I'm pretty sure it was the one where Yu-Gi fought uh, Weevil or Haga. Uh, in the Duelist Kingdom, basically, where Yu-Gi is trying to, get rid of re trying to get revenge for the Exodia pieces that he threw away. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, it's the toys in the Argos catalog. Okay. And just kind of got into it. I mean, back then, that was showing the episodes randomly uh, on TV. So I watched that. Then I think it was, you know, the Pegasus with the cassette episode, the videotape episode where he fights Yugi. A bunch of other random episodes. And eventually, because b back in the day, you know, my grandparents, we would go to the UK and they would come visit us. And they used to live with us before they uh, got their own house here. Um... I remember my grandmother, uh, I would hang, hang around with her. My brother was a lot younger. We would either go to the beach with the bus or she would go to uh, Woolworth, our mess. And later on, it was called Deben Debenhams for a long time. And now it's a completely different store. But we would go on foot. I would just go with her. And I remember that was when I got my first Yu-Gi-Oh! pack. It was Metal Raiders and Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon through a glass display uh, that a woman like needed to put a key to open it if you wanted to get something. Uh, back in the day, Yu-Gi-Oh! packs, at least in Cyprus, Cyprus pounds were three pounds each. And I remember, I was like, can I get one? I, I get one from Metal Raiders and I get one from my brother as well that wasn't there with us. And I still remember the first nine cards I got from my first Yu-Gi-Oh! pack. It was the Ring of Magnetism, first card. Then the second card, I think it was Skull Knight. And I don't remember the order of the rest of the cards, but I do remember which cards they were. It was Lava, Lava, Lava Battle Guard, Flame Cerberus, it was Germ Infection, um, Zombie Ghoul as my rare, I think that's his name. And what else? A few other monsters. Was that? Oh, the um, Steel Scorpion 2, I think that's his name. And is that everything? Am I missing a card? Maybe I'm missing a card, but I think, I think that should be nine cards. I do remember them, though. Like, if I stop this video and really think about it, I remember all of the original nine cards I got uh, from that set, basically. Oh, yeah, and Big Eye. Big Eye as well. Just a lot of the ugly eye monsters. Um, 
So yeah, my brother got his pack too. Uh, he wasn't too thrilled and uh, for a long time, like afterwards, I would go to a park near our house. Uh, you needed a few minutes to go there on foot. And there was two other kids. One had the Kaiba starter deck, the other one had the Yugi starter deck. And I just had the nine cards from my Metal Raiders booster pack. I would commonly, like frequently, get my brother's nine cards from the Lob booster pack. And basically combined them, 18 cards, and that was my deck basically. Back then, we didn't know anything about the official rules. We just followed what we saw on like the Duelist Kingdom anime. And just did whatever the hell we wanted. And I always was like, damn, these starter decks, Blue Eyes, White Dragon, Dark Magician, I gotta get this shit, I want this shit. And they just had more cards, and back then, it's like, the more cards you had, the better you were. Having a big-ass fat deck. Um, and then I remember it was uh, my birthday. Damn, I don't remember when it was. Uh, was it 2003, 2004? I think it might have been like 2004. And uh, my godfather got me. We went to the uh, Woolworth once again, and I got a Link Cable, which I always wanted for Pokemon Ruby, you know, uh, trading and doing shit, and that was very important. And for Yoshi as well, like the Mario games on Advance, uh, you can co-op and play together too. So I, I got that. I got my first Yu-Gi-Oh game, which was the World Championship 2004, in our version, the European version. Uh, the promo cards were Harpy's Feather Duster, uh, the Magna Warrior, like the ultimate big guy, uh, uh, 3,500 attack, uh, 3,850 defense, and Sinister Serpent, of course. You know, two broken cards and a collectible card, you could say. And I got my uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon Kaiba deck. B back then, I liked Kaiba more than Yugi, and I liked his monsters more. Now I think it's the opposite. I think I, I definitely like Yugi more than Kaiba. And, uh, man, the Yuki starter deck was a million times better than the Kaiba deck, if you were just going to play it properly. Uh, my brother got the Yuki one, since I got the Kaiba one. And now we got more cards, we can actually play, we can, act we can actually do shit. And I remember playing the advanced game too, like, on my GBA. And I couldn't summon, like, big monsters like Sanji Jin. I'm like, why can't I summon this guy? Why do I need a tribute? In the anime, they don't tribute. <laughs> so, I thought that was pretty funny. And, I mean, from there, uh, I, back then, I mean, I, I didn't have the money to do whatever the hell I wanted. Like, if I was going to go and buy Yu-Gi-Oh packs, it would be like one pack. Maybe, eventually, it got to two packs, three packs, a few packs, basically. But, it was never really a bunch of packs. Like, even five, maybe. That was a lot. Um, so... Spell Ruler, you know, Pharaoh Servant, those are my sets. Uh, getting a few packs from those. And then I think I just, eventually, you know, my, my dad just didn't let me go to Debilems because I would like buy Yu-Gi-Oh cards and stuff. And they hated me for playing Yu-Gi-Oh and buying Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So he put measures eventually so that I really couldn't buy cards easily. But, you know, when it was my birthday... I always use the chance, you know, with my godparents, get some more Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. I remember I got the uh, the Warriors Triumph structure deck with uh, Guildford the Legend. And what else did I get? I mean, I'm going all over the place. But basically, that's how I got into Yu-Gi-Oh. Into the anime, of course. It was hot shit back in the day. Only the first Duel Masters anime... Um, was showing on the TV. All of the other ones, like GX 5Ds, I've experienced on my PC. You know, watching them from on YouTube back then. Back then, you could watch like uh, anime episodes on YouTube and shit, and other streaming sites and stuff. And the games, of course, getting more Yu-Gi-Oh games. Uh, the GX one, the Duel Academy one, that was hot shit, 100%. And then the Tag Force two, man, that was huge for me because. It had so many cards, like through Tactical Evolution, from like L Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon to Tactical Evolution. It was GX, it was on the PSP, you know, the graphics, all of the attack duels, the extra shit you can do, put your partner to duel. Man, that was, that was pretty cool. And I basically just learned a lot about all of the card interactions, combos, and things 
through the Tac Force games, Tac Force 2, then Tac Force 3. I didn't get Tac Force 4, but I did get Tac Force 5. And I mean, basically, that was it. Uh, Duelist of the Roses was another big one. I got that really early. Once again, my godmother got me that. Um, I think, it, oh no, it was on Christmas. And that was a hot ass game uh, with the Magna Warriors 2 as promos. I got that bundled with Castlevania Lament of Innocence. Didn't really realize the worth of that game immediately, but I ended up playing it and loving it uh, a bunch of years afterwards when I was a teenager. But uh, yeah, that's how I got into uh, Yu Gi Oh! Uh, I went all over the place, but I think I covered most of the important stuff. It was through the Arcos catalog, thinking that, man, these, these toys are lame. What the fuck are these things? <laughs> you know, Blue Eyes, White Dragon, Summon Skull toys. I just thought they were lame. The characters, I remember thinking they were lame because they did have like uh, toy characters for Yugi and Kaiba, I think, too. Or you saw their faces uh, on the photos there. And I thought, man, these guys are lame. Like, I, I really did seriously think Yugi's hairstyle was like super lame. And I guess it is kind of, maybe if you think about it. It's crazy looking. But, you know, who would have thought that a franchise that I thought, man, this is some bullshit. What is this shit? Digimon, Pokemon, all this shit is better. And then eventually, through the anime, you you learn, man, this is hot shit. The Yu-Gi-Oh opening, like the Four Kids one, was hot shit too. Uh, it really got you into the groove. And then, collecting the cards, um, slowly but surely. So, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, once again, this is to honor Kazuki Takahashi's memory of how I got into Yu-Gi-Oh!, uh, never forget, I mean, this guy is just more more than any politician could be. If you think about the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise, all of the jobs, all of the money has generated, just all the fun of playing Yu-Gi-Oh!, all the different formats you can experience, all the games, all the tourneys, just all of the jobs, just think of all the jobs that got created uh, through Yu-Gi-Oh!, like... Uh, a lot of revenue is generated on websites like TCG Player and Yu-Gi-Oh! Card Market. I mean, of course, there's other TCGs, but Yu-Gi-Oh! brings up a lot of money. Just think of all the whole scene of what the Yu-Gi-Oh! Card Game really represents. And it, it was all possible to Kazuki Takahashi. I mean, I guess it didn't really touch the anime, but yeah, I remember watching the GX dub on YouTube and thinking that was really cool shit of course back then I mean the dub the, the, the dub was bad but eventually I did watch the sub watched everything from the start to finish 5Ds man 5Ds I remember watching that in Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds was actually one of the first animes I watched in Japanese it was basically that and History's Strongest Disciple Kenichi I think so all over the place I'm going but, man, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's hot, hot-ass shit, like Season 2. If you watched it, you guys know. It's probably the best Yu-Gi-Oh! season, in all probability. Just really, really good. And even Season 1 of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's, I actually think is quite good. It's one of the best Yu-Gi-Oh! seasons in general, too. Season 1. Season 2 gets a lot of praise, but not a lot of people give props to Season 1. But it really is very good as well. And just, uh, you know, Season 2 just follows through perfectly from... Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D Season 1. It just set it up perfectly. So, yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! Man. Card game, anime, uh, video games, just everything. Yeah. So once again, RIP to Kazuki Takahashi. I talked with Alpha Trading Card Games too about making, maybe making like a proper like history tribute to him or something. But I don't know if he wants to do that. I'm pretty sure somebody like Jay Witz is probably going to do something eventually. Like a really quality video to honor him. But um, hopefully I'm not wrong. We'll see. Um, maybe we'll do something with Alpha Training Card Games on his channel. Which is a dedicated Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. And much bigger than mine. Uh, maybe not. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but that guy, he has a lot on his plate right now too. As always. So I can understand why he wouldn't really have the time to do this. But anyways, this was my second sort of tribute to Kazuki Takahashi. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is how I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, tell me in the comments below how you guys got into Yu-Gi-Oh! Hopefully it's shorter than mine. And that's about it. 
uh, Saber Wolf 94, subscribe to the channel. RRP Kazuki Takahashi.